Hello, my name is Angela from Angela Simpson Functional Medicine Physiotherapy. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about perimenopausal anxiety because I see a lot of women in my practice dealing with this. It's a very common symptom and can start as early as from the age of 30, um, maybe possibly even earlier than that, um, but definitely more common into the early and mid 40s and uh, close to when you're having uh, going through menopause. And there's several reasons for this. One of the reasons is definitely the change in your hormonal system. Uh, estrogen and progesterone, which are your female sex hormones, are both on the decline as we age. And often as we get especially into our 40s and beyond, um, there is commonly uh, or more commonly an imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. And so uh, this sometimes is coined the term estrogen dominance. And uh, the reason that this is so common in this particular age group is because even though both hormones are on the decline, um, it does depend on your lifestyle factors and also your genetics as to how quickly either one is on the decline. And quite commonly, if there is um, any stress in your life, which often for women in their early to mid 40s, there is a lot going on in their life, can be good stress, can be bad stress, can be a combination of both. But often there are several factors that can play into this. Just the general busyness of everyday life. Sometimes you are still potentially um, managing and uh, raising your children. Sometimes you're starting to deal with aging parents and you're managing that or some other aging family members. Um, you're probably working as well and uh, you're probably trying to maintain your home life as well as your own uh, personal self-care. So there's just a lot going on. Not to say that there isn't in other times in your life, but this is a particularly busy time in a female's life quite commonly. And so what happens when our body is under stress is if it's under too much stress for us to manage, for example, um, what will happen often is what's called a progesterone steal. So the body will actually steal our, one of our sex hormones, progesterone, to make cortisol to help us manage our stress. And so what will happen in this particular case is that the progesterone will go on to the decline faster than it should. And sometimes this can result in an imbalance in the estrogen to progesterone ratios. And when you get into these types of imbalances, that alone can cause anxiety. But in particular, if you are a female that is still cycling, you will notice that at certain times in your cycle, this ratio will be more pronounced. And one of the primary symptoms can be anxiety. And most commonly, this will happen in the back half of the cycle, which is typically the progesterone dominant phase. And so if this is the case for you, there is some ways to help manage this and help to bring those levels back into balance. But it's just important to recognize this. So if you do feel like you are dealing with some anxiety and you are in this age category, you may want to look at some ways to help get your stress levels under control, better managed or better techniques for dealing with it um, so that you can actually help to bring those ratios back into balance. And one other common reason why anxiety can start to creep up into uh, this particular age category it has to do with gut function. So as we age, um, just in general, it is a little bit more difficult for us to flush out toxins in our body. Our body, even if we're healthy and well, it doesn't work quite as efficiently at getting rid of toxins. And so over our lifetime, we will get a little bit of a burden and a buildup of toxins in our body, regardless of how healthy we are and how well we're doing with our lifestyle. And so if you are not able to get rid of toxins in your body as efficiently, sometimes this starts to impair your gut function. And this can also be paired up potentially with some diet issues as well. So sometimes people don't realize it, but they might have certain food triggers that they're unaware of that could be causing them some gut dysfunction. And if the gut is not functioning optimally, this is an area where those neurotransmitters, which are chemical messengers or signalers that uh, give us a signal from the brain back to the gut and vice versa to feel good. Uh, it also gives us signals to relax our nervous system, as well as to sleep, amongst other things. And so if we're not actually producing these neurotransmitters in optimal amounts and we're not able to utilize them properly, we often will be dealing with symptoms of either anxiety or potentially depression. And so it's really just important to recognize this and think about the bigger picture. And it's not just necessarily about managing that anxiety and doing something specifically to um, dampen the anxiety. It's actually looking at your body's systems and seeing what is not functioning optimally and helping you get that system back into function so that you're producing the proper hormones and neurotransmitters that actually help you feel emotionally balanced, emotionally well. And so these are two of the main areas 
that you need to focus on and also just to identify which area might be the most affected in you. So then you can start, work, start to work on a treatment plan. So if you have any further questions about this, please feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to answer any questions about this or any of your other health concerns that you feel like might have been bothering you for several years and you're looking to get some answers for. You can either contact me through this Facebook group or you can go to my website, www.angelasimpsonphysio.ca and you can contact me through that. Thanks for watching.